We shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle round to tend these fires. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change alive from deep within the earth. It is time now, it is time now that we thrive. It is time we lead ourselves into the well. It is time now, and what a time to be alive. In this great turning we shall learn to lead in love. In this great turning we shall learn to lead in love. Indeed, we lead in love. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Good morning, good morning, and how do you do? Good morning, Sophia. Good morning, Vanny. Good morning to Angela. Good morning, Pradeep. Good morning to Sandy. Good morning, Ashraf. Good morning to Ken. Good morning to Jake. Good morning, good morning. Good morning to you. Good morning, good morning. And how do you do? Indeed, how are you feeling today? It's a beautiful sunny day outside, so get outside, go for a walk or a bike ride, skateboard, play basketball, play frisbee, play some tennis up against a, a wall, that would be fun. Throw a ball with someone, go and sit at the park or go and play at the park. Get out a blanket, and stretch it out on the grass and just enjoy being outside. Well, it's a sunny day outside, but it's not so sunny in Miss Coulterman's heart today. Today, I am feeling sad. And the reason I'm feeling sad, you might see that today I'm wearing an orange shirt. And the orange shirt represents, in Canada, it represents a very, very tragic time in history when Indigenous children were taken away from their families and they had to go and live at residential schools. N taken away from their family, not with their family, not with their friends, not with their community. They had to go and live away from the family and be taught at a place away from their family. And so I'm holding this poster today. It says, wear an orange shirt. Monday, May 31st, 2021, every child matters. Remembering the children. And when it says here, remembering the children, in particular, we're thinking about the 215 children's bodies that were found under a residential school in Kamloops, BC. And this is a real tragedy. Um, in history, first of all, it was such a tragedy that all of these Indigenous children were taken away from their families. But secondly, the fact that we're now finding the bodies of dead children, it's a very sad story in Canadian history. So that's why we're wearing an orange shirt today. <coughs> I'd like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather today is the Mississaugas of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat. And here at Lake Simcoe, where I live, I walk the sacred land of the Ojibwe and Chippewa. We also recognize the enduring presence of all First Nation, Métis, and Inuit people. So I'm going to break from my tradition today of starting with songs because I really think it's important to start with this story, the Orange Shirt Day story. Why 
do we have these orange shirts on? Typically, we honor Orange Shirt Day on September 30th, and I will wear my orange shirt again that day. But because of this recent find of these 215 children's bodies in BC, I think it's really important that we all understand the story of the orange shirt. This story, the author of this story is Phyllis Webstad, and this is Phyllis's story. She's the little girl in the story. And <clears throat> when Phyllis was really little, <clears throat> she lived with her granny. And she looks like she's having fun too. Look at her in this bucket of water while granny is busy gardening. And they lived at the Dog Creek Reserve, First Nation Reserve. And she's having fun with her granny. The way they survive on this farm is by growing vegetables or fruit or by fishing. They go fishing together or killing animals that they can live off of. There was no electricity at her home, no indoor bathroom at her home. So this was a different way of living, but she was very happy living with her granny. I'll show you what I mean. Look, isn't that sweet? She's having fun in that bucket of bubbles. You can see that she's happy and content. And look, she's got a dog to keep her company too. And she's loving her time with her granny. Oh, look. Just like you celebrate your birthdays, look. She's celebrating her birthday with a birthday cake. So beautiful. They all look like they're having fun together at Granny's house. One day, Granny took Phyllis to town. And they went to the ranch family restaurant look at this how much fun is that when you get to go to a restaurant you get to order off the menu you get your favorite foods and look she looks like she likes some ketchup she looks really happy in the picture and not only that but granny took her shopping oh i can see how happy they both are and Granny bought her a beautiful orange shirt. And Phyllis was so proud of that orange shirt. Well, the day came. The day came when Phyllis was to get on this bus with all these other students. And she was leaving her First Nation Reserve to go to a residential school where she would be uh, raised and taught by the nuns there. And look, she's so proud of that orange shirt, her brand new orange shirt. I can see that in her face. She's so proud of it. She loves her granny so much. This is what it kind of looked like at the residential school, a building. You could see a cross because a lot of the residential schools were run by nuns, Catholic nuns, and they all have a cross that they're wearing. And here's, oh, look at Phyllis's gorgeous long hair here. I can see she's wearing her orange shirt. Well, the sad news was as soon as she arrived at the reserve, they took off her orange shirt and she had to wear just a standard piece of clothing that they gave her. And they cut off her gorgeous long hair. It wasn't fair. They were not treating her fairly. She couldn't be her true self. And they were starting to teach her their ways of thinking and their ways of being. For example, they were Catholic nuns, so they were starting to teach her perhaps some Catholic prayers instead of the traditional spiritual spirituality that she would have had with her First Nation. Oh, at night time, the children were all asleep in their beds. However, Phyllis 
you could see she was crying and she's sad and she's missing her granny. She didn't want to go there. <clears throat> now, the other thing that happened was each day the students from the residence, from the residential placement, would get on a bus to go to a local school, a regular school. But you can see that the students who were from the First Nation <clears throat> all kind of stuck together, I guess you could say. They were friends together. And they did learn some things. They learned how to read and they learned how to do their math and whatnot. And that was a, I guess you could say that was a good part. They, they did get some education, but the sad part was they were lonely because they were separated from their families, from their grannies and their loved ones, their moms and their dads and their brothers and their sisters. And Phyllis would often daydream and think, oh, I wonder how granny is. Is she enjoying her gardening? I miss her so much. She's really really missing her life with Granny. Now, at the school, there were special clubs, like book clubs to read books, but they didn't let the children from the residential school join the book club. They would have special sports teams, but they wouldn't let the children from the residential schools join the sports team. So the residential students were not allowed in the clubs or the sports. They were segregated. They were meant, they were told to stay by themselves, stay over there. This is kind of a cute story because when they're on the bus going back to their residence, they do enjoy time together. They've each picked some onions from the garden and I can see they're enjoying their time together, but they're still missing, 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 missing their family. That's number one in the story. Oh, here they sang a song that Miss Coulterman sings. So they're kind of friends together, which is great. And they sing, we're the missions, we're the missions, mighty, mighty missions, mighty, mighty missions. Everywhere we go, everywhere we go, people want to know, people want to know who we are, who we are. So we tell them, so we tell them, we're the missions, we're the missions, mighty, mighty missions, mighty, mighty missions. So they did have fun together, which was nice. And they had these songs that they shared together. But the truth is, it was a sad time in history because they were taken away from their families. And the nuns were trying to tell them how to run their lives or what they could do with their lives. And so in this picture, you can see Phyllis is just delighted when she gets to go back home to her granny. Oh, look at Granny's just waiting with open arms to greet Phyllis when she comes back. After 300 sleeps, she says, she got to come home to Granny's house and be with her granny. She counted the 300 sleeps. And when she got home, she went fishing for salmon with her granny. She went to the Fraser River and they ate the salmon for dinner. Oh. And the last page shows an orange t-shirt that says, every child matters. It's so true, all children matter. No children should be segregated. No children should be separated from their families or told, you can't be part of our club. You can't be part of our team. That's just not fair.
<clears throat> so because I'm wearing an orange shirt, I'm going to start with a color song. Red and yellow and pink and green, purple and orange and blue. I can sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow tune. Red and yellow and pink and green, purple and orange and blue. I can sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow tune. Hey dum diddly dum, hey dum diddly dum. This wonderful medicine wheel created by indigenous people. We've got four elements, the earth, the air, the fire, and the water. These are all important to our life, but each element is also a part of your being. So for example, the earth means to take care of your physical body and do some exercising and eat healthy. The air means to take care of your mental health. Do the things that bring you calmness and bring you joy so that your mental health will have clarity so that you won't be all confused or angry. The fire element is your spirituality and for some of us it's a religion but it can also be just a time in the day, a time every day when you just take time for yourself. You might think about a certain religion you're part of, or you might think about a God or Allah. You might think about how much you love nature and you want to protect our planet. You might think about just having a quiet time of meditation where your mind is just clear. And the last element is water, your emotions. And we've talked a lot about our emotions lately. The goal is to try to be as happy and or calm as you can. Feelings, I'm just gonna get my feelings chart. Feelings can some way, sometimes get in the way of you feeling calm or happy. For example, today, I'm a little bit sad. 
I've got my orange shirt on and I'm thinking about those 215 young students whose bodies they found. So it makes me feel sad. So I'm not quite in this happy, happy mood today. I'm just sort of okay today. I'm not super excited like a birthday. And I'm not really, really uh, angry and mad. I'm not really tired and I'm not sick, but I am sad today. And I guess the goal is to, even if you have these emotions going on, to try to be sort of calm and bring yourself back to some kind of happiness. <clears throat> if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Hooray. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Hooray. If you're happy and you know it, your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Hooray! Ole clap. Ole, 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 ole. Keep clapping. Ole, 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 ole. Ole, ole. Tap your legs. Ole, 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 stretch your arms, ole, 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 ole. Ole, ole, stretch up. Ole, 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 ole. Ole, 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 ole. Ole, ole, I gotta loosen up. <clears throat> I love singing a song it's called the window and it's all about nursery rhymes so students get to call out a nursery rhyme and we sing about it and if you don't know a nursery rhyme will throw you out the window it's just for fun this is just a song about fun my friends no one's being thrown out the window but it's just for a joke the window, the window, the second story window. If you don't know, a nursery rhyme will throw you out the window. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown and we threw him out the window. The window, the second story window. If you don't know, a nursery rhyme will throw you out the window. Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow and everywhere where that Mary went we threw her out the window the window second story window if you don't know a nursery rhyme will throw you out the window Humpty Dumpty had a great sat on a wall Humpty Dumpty had a great fall all the king's horses all the king's men we threw them out the window, the window, second story window. If you don't know a nursery rhyme, we'll throw you out the window. 
Hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck one. The mouse ran down and we threw him out the window, the window, the second story window. If you don't know one nursery rhyme, we'll throw you out the window. Just joking, I'm not throwing anyone out of a window. <clears throat> Let's tap your legs. Thank you for this day, students. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, students. Thank you for this day. This beautiful, wonderful, glorious day. This beautiful, wonderful, glorious day. This land is your land. This land is my land. From Bona Vista to Vancouver Island. From the Arctic Circle to the Great Lake waters. This land was made for you and me. Hello. How about happiness runs in a circular motion. Happiness runs in a circular way. Happiness runs in a circular motion. Happiness runs in a circular way. Bottom bum bottom bottom bum bottom bum bottom bum bottom bum 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 bottom bum bottom bottom bum bottom bum 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 bottom bottom bum bum that's a good one for working on your lip closure trying to teach yourself to close your lips it isn't any trouble just to S-M-I-L-E. It isn't any trouble just to S-M-I-L-E. So if you're feeling troubled, it'll vanish like a bubble. If you only take the trouble just to S-M-I-L-E. Farmer Brownie had a dog. Bingo was his name. Oh, B-I-N-G-O. B I N G O B I N G O and Bingo was his name. O work on that. O let's do it one more time because some of the students are working on. O Farmer Brown he had a dog and Bingo was his name. O B I N G O B I N G O B I N G O and Bingo was his name. Oh, good for you. Another one we like to work on are, is the letter S. Like a snake. You make it at the front of your sound, uh, your mouth. S a sailor went to see, 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 to see what he could see, see, see. And all that he could see, 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 was the bottom of the deep blue sea, see, see. Let's try it again, just a little bit faster. A sailor went to see, 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 to see what he could see, 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 and all that he could see, 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 was the bottom of the deep blue sea, see, see. Good for you. S, s. When I was a child, we used to always t practice tongue twisters, tongue twisters, so that we could work on the various sounds in our mouth. I'm trying to think of one of those. I can canoe a new canoe. Can you canoe a new canoe too? That would be a tongue twister. And you try saying it faster, faster, faster. I can canoe a new canoe. Can you canoe a new canoe too? <laughs> anyway, that's, that's what a tongue twister is. Something funny that you can say over and over again and work on various parts of your articulation. 
This pretty planet spinning through space. You're a garden, you're a harbor, you're a holy place. Golden sun going down, gentle blue giant, spin us around all through the night. Safe till the morning light, this pretty planet spinning in space. You're a garden, you're a harbor, you're a holy place. Golden sun going down, gentle blue giant, spin us around all through the night. Safe till the morning light. It's true. Our planet Earth keeps spinning around. And it's our job to continue to take care of planet Earth. And we did talk about Earth Day in April. April 21st, April 22nd is Earth Day. But Every day is Earth Day in a sense that we all want to take care of our planet, this beautiful planet that we live on. And during the month of June, we're going to be talking a lot more about oceans and the life in an ocean and different habitats for animals and where they live in the world. So we'll continue with that in June. But today I'm going to wrap up the month of May. May is finishing today. So I'm going to circle back to some of the things we've been talking about in May. We did Mother's Day. We did um, Ramadan. We did Eid. We did Victoria Day. There were a few special birthdays in May. And now we're preparing for the next month of June. All things on earth shall pass under the sky but music alone shall live music alone shall live music alone shall live and never die it's true make music part of your day listen to music sing to music dance to music, sit calmly and quietly listen to music. It's your choice. Make music part of your day. Now, to honor the Toronto Maple Leafs are playing their big seventh game tonight against the Montreal Canadiens. This is really important in Canadian culture. And in Toronto culture, because the Toronto Maple Leafs are our hockey team in Toronto. And we want them to win. So to honor the Toronto Maple Leafs, we're going to do our breathing based on the maple leaf. So we're going to breathe it in and out. In, out. In. Out, in, out, in, out, in, out, out, in, out, in, and out. And also in the month of May, we talked about different shapes. And we talked about different shapes that are represented in different signs in our community. Let's breathe it in. This is a heart. Breathe it in. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. And 
often you see the heart symbol in our community when it's things to do with our health. Going to a doctor's appointment, going to a special doctor's appointment, taking care of your health, we see the symbol of the heart. Square, let's breathe it in. Hold it, hold it, hold it, and blow it out. Let's try that again. Breathe it in. Hold it, hold it, and blow it out. Mm -hmm. And a swimming pool shape, a rectangle. Tangle. Breathe it in, hold it, hold it, and blow it out. And a triangle. Breathe it in, hold it, and blow it out. These are all good shapes to remember when you're doing your breathing. And a circle. Breathe in it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. And blow it out. All my life's a circle. Sunrise and sundown. The full moon through the night time till the daybreak comes around. All my life's a circle, but I can't tell you why. The season's spinning around again, the years keep rolling by. So we saw some shapes. And now I'm going to show you some of those shapes in community signs. This one we all know. It's an octagon and it says stop. You're right. A red stop sign. Even if, on, if you're walking or if you're on a bike in a car, you have to stop. And then you have to look both ways so that you're not entering into unsafe into an unsafe situation where a car might be coming. Here's a square. And this sign is really important if you live in an apartment building or if you're in a building, if you're in a, a mall and you have to know where to push the button if there's a fire. And of course, closely attached to that is this rectangle that says Fire exit. If you live in an apartment, at our school, in a building or in, in an office building, you want to know where the exits are. This little running man, although you don't really run, you just move swiftly to leave the building to get out of the fire. Let's find another shape. Here's another square, but a very handy sign. When you're in the mall, in a restaurant, in a coffee shop, wherever you are and you need to go to the washroom, this is the, rec this is the square you're going to look for. The women's and the men's bathroom. Here's another really important square. And it's blue with the letter H, hospital. If you have to get to the hospital for an emergency or if you have an appointment, follow the H to the hospital. And this square tells you it's safe to walk across the street. But still look, I still, even though it tells me it's safe, I still look just to make sure there's not a car coming. This shape is a rhombus. 
or a diamond. And you often see this diamond shape for construction sites, people working on the highways or the roads. It says work zone. And you want to stay away from a work zone. If you're on your bike or if you're walking, you want to stay away from. It's not a safe place to be, a work zone. Now this square is important, square and blue. It's either important if you need wheelchair parking or wheelchair accessibility into a building. You're going to look for this sign to help you. Or if you don't need a wheelchair, then you don't want to park a vehicle in the parking spot that's specifically for people who are in wheelchairs or need assistance. Oh, here's a great one. Close to our school, you would see this. This shape is a pentagon. And sometimes you just see that pentagon shape that tells you students are crossing, please be safe. School crossing. This circle, my friends, circle with a crisscross and two R's, R, R, tell you it's a railway, a railroad. Do not go near a railroad. Around my home here where the farms are, etc., there are railways. There's lots of railroad. But I tell the students, stay away from the railroads. They're not safe. They're not safe to play on. They're not safe to ride your bike near. And the last one I want to show you, I, did, I just think it's an important sign for you to know. When you have your cell phones and you're out and about in the community, you're at a coffee shop or a restaurant or the mall or shopping or going on the TTC, the Toronto Transit, you want to look for this Wi-Fi zone so that you're not using up all your data on your phone. You can connect to Wi-Fi and that will help to reduce the cost of your telephone because cell phones can be really expensive. So another thing I want to circle back to, today's my day of circling back. This month I showed you different things that you can do with clothespins. You can make some cards that have numbers on them and you can put the correct number of clothespins on the card. So I would count all the way to 14. Or you could do numbers to 30. You could do numbers to 20. It's your choice. But practice with these clothespins. In fact, clothespins are a great activity to practice every day because it's a good fine motor task. You're pushing, pushing, pushing down on it. In our classroom, we have a clothesline set up so that you can practice those pins. And if you don't want to do it with numbers, you can always find something in your house to practice putting the clothes pins on. You can find a box. You can find, this happens to be my clothes pin carrying case. So I want you to practice with clothes pins. Another activity could be the numbers can be written on the clothespins. Number five, number one. You could go all the way up to number 20, number 30. It's your choice. Make a card or make take a plain piece of paper and put some dots on the paper and then match the dots with the correct clothespin. So for example, this one I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, and I'm going to match it with number five on my clothespin. These are things you can be doing at your house. That's a good activity for you. So today is Monday. 
Today is Monday. Today is Monday. All day long. All day long. Today is Monday. Today is Monday. All day long. All day long. And here's the sequence for the days of the week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And I gave it away. Today is mm, Monday. If today is Monday, tomorrow will be t Tuesday. Good for you. And yesterday was a day with your family. Yesterday was s Sunday. Awesome. Good for you. And the month, it's the last day of May. January, February, March, and April. May, June, July and August, September, October, November, December. These are the months of the year. Today is the last number, 31 of 2021. So I've got 31 zebras here, my friends. But we're going to count with ordinal numbers. The order of the numbers, instead of counting one, two, three, four, five, we're going to count. Wait, count with me. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, fourteenth, fifteenth. 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st, Today is the 31st. Sometimes those ordinal numbers might be a little confusing, but they work. They work really well for a calendar. Ordinal numbers also work well if you're running in a race. Who came in first? Who came second? Who came third? Who came fourth? Fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. Mm -hmm. Ordinal numbers are also good when you're lining up. Who's first in line? Who's second? Who's third? Who's fourth? They come into our daily life, don't they? You can see them in different places. Now, I also, this past month, we talked about patterns. We talked about how you could make a two parts to a pattern, like A, B, A, B. Three parts to a pattern, a, B, C, A, B, C, three things. A pattern could also be A, A, B, B, A, A, B, B. There's different patterns. And the more you repeat the pattern over and over again, you make what's called a tessellation. Here's a pattern of black, White, black, white, black, white. That's the pattern. Black, white, black. Pattern over and over again. Here's a pattern of seahorses. Light and dark, light and dark, light and dark. And the more you create the pattern over and over again, it makes a tessellation. Here's a really pretty one of triangles. Triangles, triangles, triangles. The pattern is repeated over and over again. So your homework today, here goes the tangerine, 
is to make a beach ball. On a piece of paper, I want you to make a big circle. Mm -hmm. And then up here, I made a small circle. Sometimes you'll see the top and the bottom of a, of a beach ball has this little circle. And then I made one, two, three, four, five, six lines for my beach ball. So if you want to stop the camera, you could create this beach ball for yourself. A circle, a little circle, and then six lines. Then the next part, I want you to fill in each section this is called a section. This is a section between two lines, and this is a section. Each part between two lines is a section. And I want you to make your own pattern. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna make a pattern with a red marker. And my pattern is going to be up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. That's my pattern going up and down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. That's my pattern, up and down. Now I'm going to do a different pattern in the next section. I think I'll use green. Now, now I'm gonna do dot, dot, squiggly line. Dot, dot, squiggly line. The letter S. Dot, dot, letter S dot, dot, letter S. That's my pattern. Dot, dot, letter S. Dot, dot, letter S. So the next section, now I have two sections done with patterns. I'll do one more. This time I'm going to use blue. So we have one pattern was an, this one is an A, B, we call that an A, B pattern because it has two parts, up, down, up, down, A, B, A, B. This pattern is a, A, B, A, A, B, A, A, B, A, A, B. One, two the same, one different. Two the same, one different. Now over here, I'm going to make, this time I think I'll make an A, B, C pattern. And an ABC pattern is one, two, three, one, two, three. So I'm using my blue. I'm going to make a circle, triangle, square. Circle, triangle, square. And that's my pattern. Circle, triangle, square. Circle, triangle, square. Circle, triangle, square. Circle, triangle, square. It's an A, B, C, or one, two, three, one, two, three. Circle, triangle, square. Circle, Triangle square. And I'd like you to finish all six 
sections. Create your own pattern, anything that you want. It could be an AB, an ABC pattern. Maybe I'll try one more. I'm gonna try an A, A, B, B. I'll show you what that looks like. Dot, dot. I'm gonna do two dots and a triangle, triangle. So two of one thing and two of the next. Two dots, two triangles, two dots, two triangles, two dots, two triangles. So that's your homework for tonight, my friends, is make a beach ball with a pattern. And if you're lazy and you don't want to make the ball, perhaps on a piece of paper, you could just practice making some patterns with your markers. Now, another thing we talked about throughout the month of May was World Turtle Day. And I think we, we, we learned a lot about turtles. So, and we also worked with rocks. We painted rocks. So here's a turtle to re represent World Turtle Day. Painting rocks is a fun activity. There's a beautiful sun, a fl sunflower and a heart. Love is the only answer. Love is the way to go. Love, love. Love, love, let our circle grow. Now, because we talked about rocks, I have some here in my sensory box. Rocks are hard. You can he hear how hard they are. They're really fun to hold to squish and to hold. There's a really nice energy that comes from within rocks. And they're free. You can find them perhaps at the park or on a driveway. You can find them sometimes along a path if you're walking on a hike. And they're great for holding. They're great for having fun in water. And they're also terrific for you to practice counting. For example, a set of 12, a dozen. You could put one rock in each one, two, three, four, all the way to 12. You could paint some of the rocks. That's a fun activity too, is to paint them. Now, another activity we did this month was weaving. We did some different patterns of weaving. So today I'm going to show you, I have a little piece of cardboard. I think it was from a, I think it was from a crackers box or something. I'm not sure. I fold it in half and you could do this too. You could use something at your house. I put my finger here because I don't want to cut, I don't want to cut it past where my finger is. So I put my finger there to stop. So I make a cut, cut, and I stop, cut, cut, cut. You can do this at your house, my friends, and cut. And then when you open it up, You've got all these lines that you could weave something through. You could weave paper, string, wire, thread, wool, if you have wool. I happen to have these strips at my house of material, so I'm going to use a yellow one today. And I go on over and under. I weave it through over, under, 
over and under. Opposites over and under. There we go. And the next one, let's do in um, green. Oh, actually, I think it's a blue. I've got these pieces of ribbon. I think they were from when my children were little. And the next one, I'm going to start from behind. Instead of on top, I'm going to go behind, over, under, over, under, and over. And I slide it up as I go. Under, and over, and under. So that's another project you can work on at your home. A little bit of weaving. Now another thing we did in the month of May is we talked about some different artists and you can see them on the wall. Vincent van Gogh, Frida, Pablo Picasso, um, Gustav Klimt with the Tree of Life, Georgia O'Keeffe, wonderful woman who did nature pictures, George Surratt, who did dot, 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 pointism in his painting. Piat Mondrian, who did lots of squares and rectangles. Kandinsky does lots of circles in his painting. Andy Warhol does lots of modern pop art, like a soup can or a Coca-Cola bottle. And Paul Clay worked a lot with triangles and shapes and rectangles and squares. So today I want to introduce you to one more artist. Claude Monet. And Claude Monet was a French artist and he created what was called the Impressionism, Impressionism art. And he he was one of the artists who was one of the first to go outside and paint whatever he saw outside. And often he would paint the same painting, but he would paint it at different times of the day. So what did that nature look like in the morning? What did that nature or that scene look like at lunch or at dinner time or at night? So that's interesting. It was about his interpretation of what he was looking at. So here are some of his famous, he had lots of famous paintings, but he, for example, he painted water lilies, beautiful lilies on the water. Here's a beautiful water lily pond with a bridge. And here's a beautiful sunrise on the water. And you can see that his work is a little bit abstract. For example, I don't see this as being really, really clear. I just see he, he designed it the way he saw it in his own mind. So I'm going to take that idea of impressionism, like I'm going to think about something in nature and put it on paper. So last night I painted this. I was thinking about a beach. So here's the beach. And here's the ocean. And here's the sun going down at nighttime. Now, in order to create something like this, it's so easy, my friends. Just these little watercolor kits from the dollar store. I think every day you should be painting with watercolors. It's so much fun. It's so relaxing. You could create anything you want. For my painting, for this particular painting, I went back and forth, back and forth to put the sand on, to put the ocean, the water in, 
and to put the sunset in the picture. And then today, I think if you start with something like that for your watercolor, start with the, we call this the background of your picture. So whatever you want for yourself in terms of the background of your picture. For me, my background is the sand, the ocean, and the sun. And perhaps for today, that could be what you create with your watercolor. Or for example, if we go back to Monet, Claude Monet, he saw the blue water and he saw the reflection of green trees and he saw the white lilies on the water. It could be whatever you want to make it. And tomorrow I'm going to add a sailboat to my picture. First I just did the background and tomorrow I'm going to put in the forefront of the picture, I'll put a sailboat that's something I love to do. I love to go on the water in a sailboat. So that's something else you could do. You could create your own Claude Monet painting with watercolor. Or if you want to try making it like Claude Monet did with the white lilies or a bridge. Those are things you can work on. Okay, another topic we've been talking about lately are habitats and a habitat is where an animal lives you and I live in houses or townhouses or apartment buildings animals live in habitats and to my knowledge there are six habitats there could even be more but these are six of the most popular habitats for example the desert where you've got animals like camels walking in the hot, sandy, dry desert. And this one is the polar habitat. At the South Pole or the North Pole, you've got snow or ice, solid ice and polar bears and penguins and walrus. Here's a beautiful habitat for an ocean. Just like the ocean painting I'm starting. Here's the, the whales and the dolphins, the crabs, the lobster, the seaweed, the fish, all grow in the ocean. Here's the grassland or the savanna of Africa. And that's where you see lions and giraffes and zebras and the jungle or the rainforest has animals like gorillas, tigers, um, all different kinds of fancy birds, a toucan, a macaw, all sorts of birds. And the last habitat is called a wetland and we have a lot of this in Canada. We have a combination of land and water that is for ducks and geese and beavers and mink. And in the south, where it's warmer, they also have alligators and crocodiles in the wetlands. So during the month of June, we're going to be talking a lot about oceans. I look forward to that and learning more and more about oceans. These are some of the things you're going to see when we look at videos about oceans. You're going to see all different kinds of shells and you're going to see the waves of the ocean. You're going to see seaweed, whales, starfish, seahorse, dolphins, jellyfish. You want to stay away from a jellyfish. Even though they look cute, they hurt when they bite you. Fish. Eight legs on an octopus. A crab or a shark. 
And starting tomorrow, we're going to be looking at more and more stories. Life about oceans. Because World Ocean Day is on June 8th. And, you know, the ocean is really important to our life. It, there's a gravitational pull of the ocean that takes the tide out and in and out and in. And there's all sorts of lovely creatures that live in the ocean. They rely on us to help take care of them. Hop on pop. I love books that rhyme one of my favorites. Up, pop. Pop is up. Cup, pop. Pop in cup. Pop, cup. Cup on pop. So he's in the cup and now the cup is on him. Mouse, house, mouse on house, house, mouse, house on a mouse. All tall, we are all tall. All small, we are all small. All ball. We all play ball. Ball wall. Up on a wall. All fall. Fall off the wall. Day play. We play all day night fight we fight all night he me he is after me him jim jim is after him C B we see a B C B three now we see three one two three three tree three fish in a tree that's kind of weird having fish in a tree Fish in a tree? How can that be? Red, red, they call me red. Red, bed, I am in bed. Red, Ned, Ted, and Ed in bed. They're all in bed. I love the rhyming. Pat, Pat, they call him Pat. Pat sat, Pat sat on a hat. Pat, cat, Pat sat on a cat. Pat, bat. Pat sat on a bat. No, Pat, no, don't sit on that. That would hurt. This is a cactus. And a cactus often grows in a desert where it's very, very hot or sandy and dry. Sad, dad, bad, had. Dad is sad, very, very sad. He had a bad day. What a day Dad had. Very sad. Thing, 
thing. What is that thing? Thing, sing. That thing can sing. Song, long, a long, long song. Goodbye, thing. You sing too long. Walk, we walk. We like to walk. So do I. Walk, talk. We like to talk. So do I. Hop, pop. We like to hop. We like to hop on top of pop. Stop! You must not hop on pop. Mr. Brown, Mrs. Brown. Mr. Brown, upside down. Pop up. Brown down. Pop is down. But where is brown? Where is brown? There is brown. Mr. Brown is out of town. Goodbye, brown. Back black. Brown came back. Brown came back with Mr. Black. Snack, snack, eat a snack, eat a snack with brown and black. Jump, bump, he jumped, he bumped, fast, past, he went past, fast. Went, tent, sent, he went into the tent. I sent him out of the tent. What get? Two dogs get wet. Help, yelp. They yelp for help. Hill, will. Will went up the hill. Will, hill, still. Will is up hill. Still. Mother, father, sister, brother. That one is my other brother. We're near the end. My brother is read a little bit. Little words like if and it. I'm so sorry. My brothers can read a little bit. My father can read big words too, like Constantinople and Timbuktu. Those are big words. Say, say, what does this say? See him, me, we, pat, pop, pop, he, three, t, p, top, hop, stop. Ask me tomorrow, but not today. I love those kind of fun books where everything's rhyming. You can almost sing the song, sing the story. Go, leaves, go! Go, leaves, go! Go, leaves, go! Friends, I will remember you. I'll think of you, I'll play with you, and when another day is through, I'll still be friends with you. Goodbye, friends. Go and create joy on this sunny day.